Outliers are observations that fall outside the expected scope of the data set. It's important to identify outliers in your data and determine the necessary treatment for them before moving into the next analysis phase. For example, it might be necessary to impute values, remove a row, perform sensitivity analysis, or choose analysis methods that are robust in the presence of outliers. This chapter will cover how to find outliers both visually and statistically, and then how to remove outliers. Let's go over a few basic ways to identify outliers visually, beginning with the scatter plot. So this is probably the first plot you'll reach for when trying to visualize outlier, outliers in your data. The scatter plot's a great tool to quickly visualize your data at a high level and see if anything major jumps out at you. And to create a really basic scatter plot is pretty simple. We can just use a function called plot and then give it uh, some data to plot. So in this case, we'll use the empty cars data set and specifically we'll be looking at the MPG column. And this will kind of give us just a high level of what that MPG column looks like. So we see pretty much all the values fall in between 10 and like 40 miles per gallon, nothing too crazy there. But now let's create a data set that might have an extreme outlier. So we'll just create a numeric vector and then say, um, give it a bunch of numbers that are kind of below 10 and throw in one 99 and see what that looks like. We'll see just visually looking at this data, most of the data points are down here. And then we see this one extreme data point all the way up here. So that's a scatter plot. Another way to quickly visualize outliers is to use the box plot function. So this will uh, allow you to evaluate outliers in a more systematic way. So let's clear all this out first. Okay, let's do it on the empty cars data set again. So the solid black line that we see right here in the middle represents the median value of your data set. And then the top and bottom whiskers is what they're called. So up here and down here represent your extreme values. So your minimum and maximum values. And then the top and the bottom of the box, so here and here, represent the first and third quartile. So let's see what this looks like if we throw in an extreme outlier again. Oh, I guess I shouldn't have cleared out data. So now we can see that something's up with this data set just by visually looking at the box plot versus how a normal data set looks. Okay, and then another option we've got in our toolbox is a histogram. So histograms will allow you to see how often values occur within certain buckets or ranges. So let's try that on the empty cars data set. So that's what a normal histogram looks like. We can see for example, here it looks like there are two values that occur between 25 and 30 and so on. So then if we want to do that with an extreme value, see what it looks like with outliers. We see all of the values fall within this first bucket except for this one. So that's how we know that an outlier is likely present when we compare it to a normal histogram. All right. And then the last plot we'll go over is a density plot. And density plots can be thought of basically as a smooth version of a histogram. Um, you can tune the degree of smoothing via the adjust argument on the density function, um, but we're not going to worry about that too much right now. All these plots are pretty basic just to show like the foundations. You can obviously start making changes to them to make them look a little bit prettier, or maybe put your own branding on it. But let's go ahead and do the density plot on our empty cars data set. So not too dissimilar from what we were seeing with the histogram. It's just instead of buckets, we've got kind of this line. It kind of looks like what you might be used to seeing with the distribution curve. Um, so nothing too crazy there. Now let's try it with our extreme data set and see what that looks like. So really similar to the histogram again. Um, all the values kind of fall within this first range, and except for this one observation all the way over here. 
While examining your data visually may be a convenient and a lot of times sufficient way to detect outliers in your data, sometimes you might require a more rigorous approach to outlier detection. So we're going to go over one common way to do that, which is standard deviation. And this just checks the extremity of your observation by calculating how many standard deviations each observation falls from the mean. So let's start by bringing our extreme data set in, and then we'll figure out what the standard deviation for this data set is. Oops, let's run data first. Okay, so what this says is to be within one standard deviation of the mean, you have to be within 27 point something below or over whatever the mean is. Okay, so going forward, let's figure out what the mean for this data set actually is. Okay, so our mean data, mean for the data set is 12.7 basically. So if we wanted to be within one standard deviation on one side, we'd have to be greater than mean minus SD. So we'd have to be greater than negative 14. And then on the other side, we'd have to be below 39.9. So if one standard deviation is going to be between these two values, let's go ahead and actually calculate how far each of these values or how many standard deviations each of these values is from the mean. So we've got the absolute value of data minus the mean divided by standard deviation. And we're going to assign that to a variable called extremity. Okay, so we can see everything except for this one value is below the value of one. So that means everything except for this one value is within one standard deviation from the mean. After you identify your outliers, you have several options to remove them if that's what you decide you want to do. Your first option would be to manually remove a specific outlier. So say you know that there's a value of 99 in this data set and you just want to go ahead and remove it. We can run this and then say, filter our data for everything that's not equal to 99. We'll print that out and we see we have every observation there except for 99. A more robust option would be to rely on that previously performed calculation where we calculated the standard deviations to remove any observations which are located too far away from the mean or too many standard deviations from the mean. So let's go ahead and rerun some of that logic. So we've got our standard deviation and our mean, and then we calculated the extremity. And let's print all that out. So let's say we decide we only want to keep observations in our data set that are less than three standard de deviations from the mean. You can do that this way by just filtering the, the data set like that. And we see we get the same result where all the observations are still there except for that 99. 